guys, my name is Courtney and this is Classics with Courtney. I don't know when this video is going up because I did pre-film a video that I haven't edited yet, but hopefully this is the next video that comes up because I would like to apologize for being gone for so long. I don't know what happened. Actually, I know exactly what happened. I was really busy one week and I was like, okay, it's fine. I'll just skip a week. Then my computer broke and it ended up being three weeks before. Ugh, I hate it. I'm just so mad at myself because I've been so consistent for the past couple of months and of course, something had to happen where I couldn't do that. Anyway, most of you are probably not here to hear my problem. Most of you guys are probably here just for the review. Because today I'm going to be talking about Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kasher. And this is a really shiny book, which makes it really hard to like hold up um, without it like being obnoxious. So I don't know how much I'm going to be holding it up in this video like I normally do. But yes, this is the book. This is what it looks like. I have an art copy. My friend interned at Penguin and got me this copy. I'm planning on getting a finished copy because, as you will see, I really, really like this book. So I love Kristen Keshore's other series that she's written. I really enjoy her writing and her books, and I was really excited for this. This came out on September 19th, and I was planning on reading it before then and doing a review for it and, you know, being on top of stuff. But for whatever reason, it took me two freaking months to read this book. I, like, literally just finished it a couple days ago. I have no idea what happened? I've never taken that long to read a book before unless it's like a really big chunky book that I like put aside for a while but like I was consistently reading like a couple pages here and there like throughout every month and I'm like why is this taking me so long? It literally made no sense. I've never done this before. So I ended up giving this like a 4, 4.5 on Goodreads and you know I docked it a little bit just because of that initial like why could I not finish this? Why did I have such a hard time reading this? I think one of the issues with this book, it's n more of a personal thing. Like, I really love Harry Potter. I really love the third book and the third movie. But in my brain, I think of it as not my favorite because you have to see the event happen twice. Because of the time turner, spoilers, but because of the time turner, you know, technically you watch the same day go by. And I, something about, like, time, time travel, something about, like, reliving or re having to see the same thing happen over and over again is like not my favorite thing. And I really do like Harry Potter, but in my brain I think of it as not as my favorite book just because of that aspect, which is really weird because I really, really love that book and I don't think it's actually my least favorite. But anyway, that is a tangent. So yes, this is a multiverse story. So you get like the first part of the novel and then it branches off and you kind of have a choose your own adventure thing, but you do have to kind of read them in order, at least in my opinion you do. And so you read like the same story kind of over and over and over again but like it's so different that like yeah I don't really have an excuse but I don't know I really really enjoyed this book I gave it a 4.5 stars which is a really high rating for me so obviously I really did enjoy it but again I think this like multiverse kind of aspect kind of threw me off a little bit this book is unlike anything that I have ever read in my entire life it is completely different like I've heard of the multiverse theory but just like the way it was used in this book it kept blowing my mind like this book like blew my mind I think that was another problem for me like why I didn't want to pick it up because it was just like not that I'm stupid or anything, I really like complex books, but this book was just like hurting my brain a little bit and I was just like, oh my god. No, I had to keep taking steps back from this book, I think, just because there was like so much going on. Again, it was really complex and I really enjoyed this book. Jane just lost her aunt who died tragically. Jane was always told by her aunt that if this house or the, like somebody from this household asked her to come to this mansion that's out in the middle of the ocean that she should do it and it turns out that her old tutor actually like owns this house or like lives at this house so and she gets invited to go there so she ends up going to this mansion and then you get like the weird multiverse story after that and each little story is so different it's almost like a different genre for each one you start off with a thriller then you get like a spy story then you get like a horror story and then you get sci-fi and then fantasy at the end it is just so weird and like I'm still like not sure about it. In my understanding this is the same multiverse that Jane is living in like all of these. Like, I want to say that every version of Jane um, in the short stories is slightly different so maybe every single version of what happens to Jane is technically a different universe or a different multiverse or maybe all these things are just interconnected and Jane just makes a different decision in this one universe. I don't know it's just like it's a lot going on and I haven't like made my mind up on a lot of stuff. This is again why I'm going to buy the um, finished copy so that I can reread it and like you know, not that I don't, I don't think a lot has changed in the new version but I would like to reread it just 
you know, to get all that good stuff out of there. So this book sounds really complicated, and it is, but it's really just a story about Jane's discovery and, like, Jane dealing with her grief. At first, I was, like, really tentative about this book because you get, like, the five different versions, and, like, there's not really a single official version, you know? There's no ending that connects everything together in a way. You know, you don't, like, get this conclusion ending where everything happens. No, you just get these five separate endings of what could happen. Like, I am a person that likes closure. I like official endings, so I was really, really worried, um, you know, when I was starting to head towards the last two endings because I realized that there wasn't going to be, like, this official ending. I am really satisfied. The last two endings um, just really pull everything together for me. She ordered everything perfectly. So like, you know, you have to read all of the five different versions in order in my opinion because each of them builds on each other and then when you get to the ending, the last um, version of the story is really important. But you do get like that sentimental ending closure that I was looking for so I was really appreciative of that. I don't know about everybody, but in my opinion, Jane never gets, like, a physical description, so in my mind, she's actually biracial, so, you know, I'm happy. <laughs> there is bi-representation because, um, both of the side characters, the twins, um, Ravi and Kieran are, um, biracial, but also in my opinion, Jane is also biracial. But there's also really good queer representation as well because Jane and Ivy definitely have a thing going on. It's never explained if Jane is bi or pan. I personally think she's pan. But that's, again, my personal opinion. Anyway, we got queer characters. Makes me really excited. I love Ivy so much. I love Jane with Ivy. Again, Jane is, like, a little bit different in every single version, and I think that kind of plays into the multiverse thing. But I still really love her character. I love, like, to see her progress, um, which is really weird to say because, you know, you can't really progress when you're seeing, like, five different endings. But anyway, I really love her. I love Ivy. I love their romance. Really great. Ravi annoys the crap out of me, but I do think he is a good character. All the characters are really fantastic and really interesting. The only character that I was not really satisfied with was Charlotte, because you kind of learned what happened to her, but like, I don't know. That was my least favorite, like, little section was the Charlotte horror section, where like, Jane gets dragged into the library and Charlotte's a part of the library. Like, something just like, didn't match up for me with that. It was like, I don't know, it just was a little bit too weird. And honestly, like, I feel like Charlotte matches up more with the sci-fi ending because we talk about, like, the house having feelings and stuff. Something about the horror ending just wasn't doing it for me. I just didn't like that one as much. But I do think it is a really important ending because it shows what happens when Jane, like, gets consumed by her grief and, like, doesn't get over it. So I do think that ending is really important. But again, that was, like, my least favorite section of the book. Okay, the plot was interesting, good like, it kept me intrigued, it kept blowing my mind, even though I couldn't get myself to stay on top of this book and keep reading it. I do think that the structure was really important and really well done and the plot was interesting. There's a lot of things like sci-fi and multiverse and like time and like things that I normally don't enjoy but I really enjoyed in this book. Again, um, there was enough closure for me that I was really excited and really happy with everything and how it ended. Really worried about things going in, but it blew my expectations. Um, you know, it blew my doubts out of the water. Everything was great. The characters were great. The romance was great. I want more. I want to know what happens to Jane. I want, like, you know, I want all that, but at the same time, I'm fine with, like, how it ended because that's not what this book is trying. You know, this book isn't, like, a plot book, which is really weird to say because there's a lot of plot that goes on, but this book is really an exploration of Jane, of her grief, how she's getting over things, how she's moving on. Kristen Kasher ex like, explores Jane just in this really weird and interesting way through the different genres and the multiverse thing. If you're a plot book person, if you read books, you know, you want that plot, you want that hero's journey, you know, you want the ending, the closure, this book is not for you. This book is definitely exploring Jane. This book is all about Jane, exploring Jane through just a very weird way and exploring grief through a really weird lens. And I really like those kind of weird premise books. That's kind of like what I like to write, so I really enjoyed this. So yes, my only complaint about this book is that it took me so gosh darn long to read for no reason at all. I love this book. I would recommend it to a lot of people. I'm going to buy a finished copy of this. Yes, it's a good book. I recommend you read it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later and keep it classy.